What's up, everyone? Welcome to the My Favorite Horror Movie Podcast. I'm your host, Christian Ackerman. I hope you're all doing well and are somehow able to make it back into a pre-COVID-19 existence. As for me, I'm still... I'm a freelancer, so I'm still waiting on um, on word when the industry can get back into gear uh, and how uh, we're going to be able to do that uh, in such a, an interpersonal experience, such as a film set. Uh, before, ooh, there's a mosquito. I'm going to get that mosquito that bit me the other night. Fucker. Uh, before we get started, please make sure to like, follow, share, and or subscribe to our podcast on Stitcher, iTunes, Podbean, uh, Spotify, YouTube, uh, obviously we have a video up. If you're listening to audio, you can go over to YouTube and watch it there. Um, it'll help inspire, and if you do uh, subscribe, it'll help me ins- inspire me to keep this thing going. Uh, as for all of you, I've put up a discount code of 20% off. Ooh, there's that mosquito, you little shit. Uh a discount code of 20% off any of the My Favorite Horror Movie books on our website at myfavoritehorrormovie.com. So if you want a book signed by Felissa and myself, uh, we have a few copies left, so uh, go over there and check it out. Uh, so let's get started today. Uh, our guest co-host is one of my closest friends in the horror industry. His name is Sean Decker. He's a journalist who's now editor-in-chief of the official Halloween movies website so he has all the the goods which I tried to get out of him in this episode on uh, the latest of the the new Halloween films coming out Uh, and then we bring in our guests Christina Klebe and Kevin Shulman whose new film I am fear is out now I am fear I am fear so let's get right into it all right so our guest co-host for the day is one of my closest friends he's a journalist who have written who's written for fangoria dread central and a ton of pub- a ton of other publications he's now the editor-in-chief of halloweenmovies.com please welcome sean decker what's up sean hey chris that was a nice introduction how you doing ah I, I'm, I'm doing all right I, I see you have your friend uh, michael next to you yeah he's been following me around since 1978 <laughs> yeah, he's he's your buddy. Yeah, your favorite horror movies, Halloween. So uh, it's uh, it's only yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, it, it, you. So you probably have a bunch of Halloween shit like in your house, right? Like, what kind of stuff do you um, have? Like, I, what are your favorite items? You know, I'm not a I'm not a huge collector per se. Um, if anything, like as the years gone have gone past, I think I've kind of just jettisoned a lot of things and really streamlined. You know, like I still got Fox and Fangoria because we grew up on that. Um, so like having those around certainly and also you know the magazine of soul world written um for so many years that you can literally go back you know to those issues for you know definitive pieces on yeah. uh, a lot of these films which is great um as far as like horror stuff i'm i've got a uh, signed vintage vintage lamps and knife uh from jamie lee curtis dick castle uh, and john carpenter yeah yeah probably I know. My, my pride and joy um Excellent. And some screen use stuff from uh, Halloween H two O because one of my faves. Uh, hmm. You know, always, always have that movies always will always have a soft spot in my heart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, aside from that, I don't know. I mean, like we're you know I'm a dork like you, so mm-hmm. we have a bunch of we have a bunch of physical media. Yeah, right? I, mean, I have Freddy shit like, everywhere. So you have you have yeah, your mic yeah. stuff. Yeah, you got you got to have it. And and and, and I. I know I've been out. We've we've taken some pretty badass pictures of of us probably about twenty thirteen or fourteen when we went through the Halloween neighborhood here in in our, your old neighborhood in my yeah. neighborhood in Hollywood, Orange Grove, uh, where we terrorized some kids a little bit and may or may not have gotten into trouble. But you you usually try to keep it nice and have the kids come up to you and give them candy and all that. Oh yeah, no, a hundred percent. I mean that's the great thing about uh, Orange Grove Avenue. If you're gonna haunt it, is Myers on. Halloween, which uh-huh. you know, I, I kind of did for an hour a year for for many years. Uh, yeah, just because everybody gets a big kick out of it. But the great thing is, you know, it's tree line, and you can disappear behind those trees. If you see some little kids, you know, that you think are going to be terrified, you just go away, and they never see you. Yeah, because um, I, you know, I loved trick or treating as a kid, and I don't want to, never wanted to ruin that experience for anybody. But if you're a teenager, beware. Yeah, exactly. So, so what? what how have you been keeping yourself busy through this whole quarantine? You know, I mean, we're been two months into it now. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, I think I, I was certainly I'm a news hound um, and just read every morning. So, unfortunately, I think I saw this coming. You know, uh, yeah. certainly before it entered. 
uh, you know, the American discourse uh, publicly. So we were kind of prepared for it. Um, my fiance, Sarah Nicklin, uh, was doing like quite well. I mean, obviously production has been shut down across the board. So that's going to impact, you know, her as an actress yeah. um, and, as a, and as a producer. But that's not to say that they're, she's not still working on things in pre-production and that she's not, you know, auditioning and being cast and things. So that's great. Uh, for me personally, obviously, uh, there's been a big dust up in the last two weeks, as you're well aware of, with AMC kind of drawing the line in the sand um, with yep. universal releases, um, which could you know, potentially in some way or not, uh, I think it'll all be worked out, um, impact the way in which we may or may not, well, we may see Halloween Kills. And we're certainly going to see that movie. I don't think yeah. anybody has to worry about that. Yeah, of course. But, you know, with, with production being shut down, you know, it, it's, it, there's certainly an impact across the board for all of us. Um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm like super, it was always a very full circle thing to go to work for uh, Trogus Film. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's an honor to work for Malik Akkad. And, um, you know, we've got a, a big franchise and there's a lot to talk about, you know, over the 40 some odd years of that franchise. So, yeah. fortunately, I've been, fortunately, I've been keeping busy. Um, but you know, I miss my friends. I miss my family. You know, I, yeah. I miss our film premieres, and you know, I miss our, our miss shooting. Uh, yeah, just, all just those regular parties and birthday horror. parties. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you, you. I mean, as you well know, the horror community in in uh, Los Angeles is very collegiate. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we see each other often. Um, so this has been, I think, very different for a lot. Of people. Um, but, you yeah. Know, I think, so, like I, you know, I think there's a silver lining to it as well. How are you doing? Uh, I, I've been doing well. Um, I mean, a lot better than, uh, you know, one could expect. Um, yeah, I've, and I've, I've mentioned this in the past episodes that I've just really, I was already on this course of, of kind of being uh, being creative at home. I, I had just spent two and a half years not uh, constantly working. I made 17 movies and, and three books, and it was just kind of a, like over- uh, you know, overkill. You know, I was catching up for you know, all the right. No, uh, you you were yeah, you were you were uh, sleep deprived certainly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was it was not. It's been nice to just kind of be like, okay, I can be on my own schedule and do things at my own pace and not have to worry about anything else. Um, but I I can truly understand how tough it is for people and and um, but at least for me, I, I'm very fortunate. I don't have kids. I don't have a you know elderly family members to take care of or you know just just things like that where that would that you really have to be around them and, and take care of them and and maybe have access to the rest of the world in order to do that um uh you know it's it's been all right for me it's been quite quite all right well that's yeah that's, that's yeah. good I, I worry about all of our friends who are quarantined alone um or separated from their loved ones yeah um, you know, I, I have my I, girlfriend I spent a, yeah then and which is great and she's amazing. oh yeah but yeah i mean i spent a lot of time reaching out to to those people and just making sure that they're doing okay and as much as i can you know i mean i wish i could do uh, we all wish we could do more yeah and you i mean at least you guys that you and sarah just went out and delivered cookies to dozens of of us and i we uh, my girl and i really appreciated that it was a nice token of uh of friendship to to see some cookies and so we have we have about two left and we're gonna be fighting two left. <laughs> you're, uh, you're absolutely welcome and, and, and yeah you know it wasn't something that we were really gonna like publicize because it wasn't about that um it really was about just hopefully seeing a friendly face from a distance yeah um, you know for a couple of minutes and and reminding everybody that no we're still all alive we're not just uh social media avatars you mm -hmm. know uh, interacting in the digital space so um you know i i think there's acts of kindness I and mean, i'm not going to say that was that was whatever we deliver cookies but yeah you on you on a daily basis see you know people that are working whether that be you know at, at the checkout counter at ralph's um you know to you know the person who's delivering you dominoes to your mm -hmm. amazon driver to all these people that are really like um absolutely you know frontline workers yeah um, and I don't think they get enough credit, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm very, very thankful for everybody. Yeah, there's an, a new appreciation for for a lot, yeah. of, a lot of different professions that weren't necessarily given the spotlight before. And now we understand. Uh -huh. Even like truckers, uh, I was on uh, Alex Napawaki's uh, podcast the other day, uh, a Horror Nation podcast, and um, and 
the, the other uh, the the co-host he's a trucker and he was actually podcasting from the cab of his truck um oh wow and, yeah and it was and it was like we went uh, we probably spent about 20 30 minutes because I, I was like ooh, like could tell me about all the things about trucking and you know i, I, I it became a, like an interview about him you know, and, Right. And, and and the appreciation of it, because I, I learned that appreciation from, you know, being in the in the film industry and then ha being handed the keys to like a big cube truck. And you're like, oh, fuck, I'm a, I'm a kid. I don't know what the fuck to do with this truck. I, can't, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to drive this thing and I'm supposed to do this now. And then you you find that appreciation like, oh, now that I know how to do this, I appreciate those people way more. And those truckers on the road. Uh, they can slow me down all they want. That's fine because I appreciate that they're the ones that are bringing the stuff to us that we need for yeah. our daily lives in order to to survive and to eat. And so, yeah, it's you know, so there's a whole new. It's gonna be a whole new world once we're out of this, and 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 hopefully it's for the better. Uh, and hopefully we can fight the people that are trying to make it for the worse. So, um, I agree. I so before agree. we before we bring in uh, a, a Christina and Kevin. Uh, I want to just get a little update, uh, I mean, as much as you can tell us on the Halloween, uh, Halloween Kills. It's supposed to coming, it's supposed to be coming out in October, right? October sixteenth. Okay, so are you guys still on track to do that? Absolutely. Okay, so all right, so that that's that's good. Not, but they, I'm sure that I'm sure they're they're probably still you or you guys are still thinking of of different plans just in case. But at least hopefully at the end. It, well, at the end of the day, Universal Pictures is, is the distributor. They're the boss, um, okay. So, you know, th these these conversations, I'm sure, will be taking place between, you know, Uni and AMC and Regal. Um, yeah. and, and I'm, you know, and I'm quite sure everybody's going to, you know, find a find a uh, agreement that suits everyone. Yeah. Um, you know, we're we're looking at a beloved franchise, and everybody's aware of it, and people oh, yeah. are very, 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 very excited about this film, which is great. You know. Who knew, you know, in 1978 that Carpenter and Co. had spent three hundred fifty thousand dollars on a, on a, you know, a little, a little bit film called The Babysitter Murders, and this many years later, um, you know, there would still be such a rabid fan base. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, everybody, people will definitely see Halloween Kills this year, and and you know, once we uh, figure out some protocol, and the industry figures out protocol to get back to production, um, I'm sure Halloween Ends will be uh, off and running quickly. Yeah. And it's, I, I know you're not going to be allowed to talk about it, but ha have you been privy mm -hmm. to any footage from the new film? Have I been privy to any footage of the new film? Yeah. Something I can't talk about. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I understand. I understand. Well, that yeah, that sounds that sounds good. Well, uh, let's let's bring in uh, let's bring in our our special guests, and then we'll jump right into it with them. Yeah, you know, that's what, thank you for putting this podcast together, particularly yeah. with these two these two guests. Um, I've been friends with Christina Cleave for years now, dear, mm -hmm. dear friend. Um, and, you know, and I haven't seen her in a bit. We know she jet sets everywhere. So sometimes she's not in LA for a bit. Yeah. yeah she's, um, yeah. So thank you. I do appreciate that. Yeah. And I, 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 it was, uh, it was, I remember it was probably about seven or eight years ago when I met Christina through you and you, you were doing a charity event uh, for breast cancer called bullying for boobies and she was one of our your teammates that would bowl against yeah, other correct. types of fundraising teams and you were the horror, yeah, we the a, horror starlet the horror starlets for yeah, yeah. We, we never really could come up with a better a better <laughs> team name i wish i wish i had um no it was it was for uh to benefit of a, a char charity called busted foundation which unfortunately no longer exists but uh, did for nearly nearly a decade um, so we raised money for women, uh, local LA women's uh, struggling with breast cancer, um, that went directly into their pocket. So I was really, really blessed for a long time to work yeah. with Christina, but Serena Vincent and Harley Baker and mm -hmm. Barbara Nettlejakova and the list goes on. And I think we raised, that was kind of amazing. I think we raised just that team alone, nearly $250,000. Oh, uh, crap. Over the wow. course of that time, so and yeah, it's due to know, the due to your your coordination. I mean, you really, you know, I, I well, I mean, I coordinated certainly, but um, you know, it was due to everybody's really all of these women, these amazing yeah. women that I worked with, and they're really like tireless work. Um, yeah, they did. You know, to work and to, to you know raise the money, which they did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then through that process, you really you know 
there were friendships formed certainly and we really got to know people um, yeah and christina's christina's just amazing yeah all right so let's bring them in all right <laughs> time to bring our guests in for the day first up she gained notoriety in rob zombies halloween uh she since then she's been in don't kill it proxy the recent hellboy movie uh, and a million other uh, horror films and foreign language uh, worldwide uh, and had worldwide acclaim. And uh, her latest film, I Am Fear, just came out uh, a few weeks ago, I think. So uh, let's welcome Christina Klebe. Woo! Woo! <laughs> and uh, uh, our next our next guest is writer and director. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wrote it. You wrote, I think. He wrote and directed Her Dark Past, and his latest movie is called I Am Fear. He directed... Uh, please welcome Kevin Shulman. Woo! Hey. Hey, all right. Hey. What's up, guys? Greetings hey, from Kevin. another planet. Yeah, so, so and Christina, you're in New York. Kevin, you're in L.A. somewhere. I don't know exactly where. Where are you at? Where are you living? I'm, He's... I'm not, I... <laughs> well, that, 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 that happened real quick. Yeah. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in Santa Monica. Oh, Santa Monica. Oh, okay, cool. So, uh, so okay. Let's start with Christina. Like, what's going on? You're, are you in upstate New York? You're not in the city, right? I am yeah. upstate. Yeah. Thankfully, I am. Um, I kind of like, uh, ex, you know, it took my parents out of the city on March 5th, and um, and we've been up here since then for practically two months. So really? I am uh, upstate with my parents, quarantining. I happen to have my Sitches shirt here. Not sure why. I've got all my like cool like shirts that I know I never want to give away, but that I don't wear that often up here. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. that's cool. So it has a bunch of uh, movie posters on yeah. it. Is that what it is? I don't oh. know. I don't know what year. Yeah. I think this was 2012. 12? No, I don't know. Is that, is that preventative? So. Is that preventative though? Just so there's no chance oh, no. that you will give it away. No, I would never give this one away because <laughs> this was this was a year that I was there, so I bought it. Um, but what year was it? Doesn't say on here. Hmm. What movie? What movie were you promoting there? Uh, it was either it was either Proxy or it was my short film that I directed as Human All as right. Animal, which if anybody has not seen it yet, it's on the platform Alter, which is a, a short uh, short film platform for horror movies. Oh. Uh, a L T E R. So just go really? to Alter, yeah, and look up as Human as Animal. It stars Diamond Dallas Page, so you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't even think I've seen it, but I've known about it for years. So uh, it would be good, or maybe I did see it. It was very experimental. It's been right, out from what I recall. Uh, yeah, kind of. It was. It um, it's like five minutes long. It's yeah. GDP. GDP is that yoga guy that used to wrestle, right? <laughs> I think at some point. It's been out for a while, but it just it only just now got on Alter like six months ago. So, and, and how are you keeping yourself busy these days? Like you know, quarantining and with with your parents of all people. I mean, I'm drinking a lot of I'm drinking a lot of wine, and uh -huh. thankfully my parents have a lot of wine in the house. Ah, good. <laughs> and it's all really good wine that I can never afford. So I'm I'm happily drinking it, uh -huh. and um, dr and eating my mother's delicious cooking because she's like the freaking best cook in the world. Yeah. So, you know, like everybody's like, oh, I'm becoming a really good cook during quarantine time. It's like, you know, I'm forced to cook. I'm experimenting. I'm like, nope, not touching anything because my mother literally is too good to compete with. So no, no cooking for me once right. again. She cooks. Does she cook every meal, like three meals a day? I, she well, breakfast, we all kind of make for ourselves. She makes yeah. lunch and dinner. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so what what region is she from? Where's your mom from? I didn't I don't she's, know. She's from the south, uh, from Bavaria in Germany. Bavaria, okay. Yeah. And so, what what kind of a uh, cuisine are you are you usually accustomed to then with your mom? Interesting. Well, this is a good question because my mom lived in Sicily for fourteen years, so she uh, actually and she learned how to cook in Italy. So she has this weird mixture of like uh, Italian ger with a little bit of German, but it's not. German cooking is not known to be good. So let's just say she cooks kind of Italian, really amazing pasta. Like today for lunch, we had, I have, I'm gluten free. So we had gluten free pasta with uh, zucchini and parsley. Oh, it was, okay. it was just so good. Oh, yeah, that does sound good. I, oh, I'm lucky. My, my girlfriend's from Malaysia. Uh, she's also very well, uh, very well uh, educated in the kitchen. So she makes some yeah. different regions of like from Thailand to yeah. Malaysia, India, Ita Italy, and that's so lucky. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I think if you have good food, good wine, and uh, we, we, you know, I did a lot of yard work today, so I'm very, oh. 
Thor actually. I, I and I had a tick on me before this, and I was freaking out. <laughs> what was I, his name? Oh God! Well, he he was he was dead before he had one. And, and and did you do the trick to get him out? Like, did you do any tricks to get him so out? No, no, he wasn't. He was just because I'd been doing a lot of yard work today. He was actually just in my hair, and oh. I I he did not attach to my body. And a little okay. trick for anybody watching this: if you ever have a tick bite you. You should take a preventative course of antibiotics for for seven days right away. For Lyme disease. I because uh, uh, because if you wait too long and you actually get Lyme disease or any of those diseases, it's already too late. I, I'm yeah. totally not pro antibiotics. That's the one time I would yeah. take antibiotics. It's a, and, you're not, and or you're not uh, pro antibiotics. Do uh do ticks terrify you? Oh my Christina. god! If you only knew, <laughs> if you only knew, that and the murder have, hornet have, are oh, my yeah. nightmare. Oh god! I saw have that. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen the movie Tick? No, there's a movie called Ticks. Oh, you don't know yes. about this? Yes, with Seth yeah, Green from it. the early '90s. It's no, incredible. It's, yeah. it's a it's a huge like practical effects splatter fest and, uh, with Clint Howard, who is oh, uh, nice. apparently apparently a uh, backwoods weed grower who is injecting his crop with steroids because this is what happens in B movies and of course uh, the the ticks grow to the size of cars and decide (laughs) to eat all the wayward urban youth who have relocated for the summer to a uh, a halfway house in order to you know you know become good kids Um, but they they just become tick bait even ticks hate those damn kids I've actually I wanted to make it. a. I wanted to make a horror movie when I was at NYU about ticks, but I never, I never got that far. <laughs> I never, I never wrote it. And uh, so it might still be, it might still be in the works. Who knows? So, so Kevin, what you been doing then to keep yourself busy? Are you, are you being creative, or are you just uh, sitting around with your scratching yourself, or what? What do you got? You got to be doing a lot. I bet. I, you know, honestly, I, I use this time to just basically mentally recharge. Um, really? and do some, do some reading, do some, you know, I've done, uh, like what usually goes on before I start to really get into and hit the ground running on a project. That's all that preparatory sort of, um, conversations you do with, in your own head, going back and forth on various different things. You kind of, I need, at least for me creatively need that process to really be able to settle into something. And then once I am, then, then it's full speed ahead. But yeah. this always goes on. Um, this always goes on uh, after I finish something and then before I start something else. And uh, I think with all the time, you know, being quarantined, I'm just getting these streamlined conversations in my head out of the way quicker. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I've been basically uh, just like everybody else, uh, you know, inside well, and uh, sheltered away from everybody you love and care about. And what's it like in in Santa Monica? Are you, you know, are is is everybody crazy? Every, everybody face masked out or what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I isn't that like isn't it like that everywhere? Yeah, um, it kind of you know, is. Like people are kind of yeah, people what? are kind of let they're stopping to use the face masks as much. I look out my window and I see the people walking their dogs, and so it's like half and half now. Not just yeah, it's kind of it's kind of annoying. Even in New York City, like we go in like a couple, you know, we we go in like we're going in tomorrow because my mom has to go to the hospital to get a mm-hmm. shot. So, like, but, but it's crazy. Like they still there are people in New York City not wearing masks. Like yeah, um, and it's and I think I'm not sure if it was De Blasio or Cuomo was like you're literally just being super selfish by yeah. not wearing a mask because it's not about you. It's about you giving it to somebody else like if you're well, especially no, in not. new york city like that's totally you know. the point i think all of us need to conduct ourselves as if we are carriers because um, yeah. a lot of right. people are asymptomatic I mean, yeah. and it really comes down to you know fellow care for the world essentially yeah. Uh, yeah. not only in a health capacity but everybody wants to get back to work um and until either there's a vaccine we develop a herd immunity or this thing tapers off um, for those of us who are creatives, are also affected like everyone else. Um, yeah. you know, Hollywood, Hollywood has no idea what protocols are going to need to be put in place in order for us to get back to work, yeah. essentially. Yeah, right. As if Hollywood wasn't challenging enough prior to <laughs> when, mm-hmm. when we were actually shooting. So <laughs> I think you know it's it's massively important that everybody, um, you know, I think really pays attention uh, to the public guidelines. That we're supposed to adhere to, you know, whether yeah. people believe it, believe it or not. What does it hurt to put on a mask? Exactly. 
right. how, yeah. how, you know, how much are we asking for somebody of somebody to, to wash their hands for 20 seconds with soap? Right. Um, you know, it's not as if we asked them to go to, you know, Europe um, in the late thirties and fight the German threat, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, we're yeah. just saying like, right. wear a mask and wash your hands. It's not right. enough. Right. I mean, I've got I've gotten my parents to like yesterday our dog escaped and some random people that we don't know found him. And I, t I literally was like, Mom, like, you can't touch the dog. <laughs> you yeah, don't know. No. You don't know who touched him. There was a family. I'm like, you, you now. And so then we were like wondering, like, what do you do? Because you know how they tell people if you're sick, don't have your animal in your room with you because it can bring it to the other Oh, yeah. family members just from touching it and stuff anyway it's probably totally excessive but i still had my mom wipe the dog down with a little alcohol i was like okay alcohol is not gonna hurt him you know alcohol i put it on my skin if i put yeah. it on my skin he can handle it yeah. i mean and hopefully it killed any possible germs but i mean you know there's 75 and up so i mean i'm worried about some random family that was like you know and then your know, mom made the random family roasted duck. <laughs> she would have probably. She probably <laughs> would have wanted to invite them in. And um, I think my mom is suffering the most, I think, from not being social. She's She uh, loves, like, having her friends over and, you know. But. Yeah. Do you spend a lot of time up there in, in upstate New York? And do you have a place in the city, too? I know you jet, jet set around uh, from L.A. to New York and all that. Well, my dad works up here, so my dad have my dad's in radio, and um, and ah. he and he works up here, so he's he's been up here forever, and because of that, we have a place up here, and um, so now we're not really in the city, but normally we we go back and forth, like so. Yeah, are you able to be creative right now? I I'm so lucky right now, and I can't even talk about what it is because it's. I've signed an NDA, but I'm very, very lucky. I'm working on something that I was cast in, in already in, in January. And I'm lucky to be able to do it from home. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's a voiceover thing. Yeah. Voiceover. But I, okay. But I can't, but I can't talk anything about it. So yeah, that's fine. Do you have a voice? Uh, do you have a, a studio there or do you just kind of just use your gear? Portable? So, I literally, I have a great mic because I do the radio show, but I actually built, I'm, I put like together a, a, a kind of um, makeshift closet situation for now uh, that sounds really good. Like I, I, because I do know a fair amount about how to make the sound, you know, whatever. Anyway, but now I'm actually going to build myself a studio because I think it's worth it. Um, it's just like, it seems like the kind of job, like, especially because I'm auditioning a lot for it and I'm working in, in that world that it's worth it to invest in that for me right now. And what kind of oh, no, shows have 100%. you done before? With, what? what kind of shows have you done before with a voiceover? Have you done shows or movies or? Uh, well, I've done a lot of video games. Um, oh, and yes. Yeah, the Friday the 13th Friday video 13. game. Yep. 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 And um, and I actually my episode of American Dad is coming out June first. I actually have an air date now, so I play uh, a couple voices on this one episode. Um, oh, so that's great. I, yeah, so keep June first, uh, American Dad. It's the the episode's called Roger Needs Dick. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I mean, how can you forget that? Yeah. It's like, um, oh, oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> and so, so when you do a remote voiceover, are are you being uh, are you connecting to a, a, like a sound engineer back wherever mm -hmm. they're recording, and yeah. and maybe a director's there like d yeah. giving you directions to how they want it, yeah. and and you're doing it. So for for somebody that doesn't really understand animation and voiceover work, like what comes is it the chicken before the egg or which which what is it like for oh, let's say American Dad, you do the voice first or they do the animation first? Um, I think they. Uh, oh, so well, American Dad. I don't know exactly. I've heard that they take a long time to get the episodes actually together because I recorded that a year over a year ago. Um, okay. So they might actually work more on like they might have an a basic outline of what the character looks like, you know, like a sketch or okay. kind of an idea. But then I think maybe based on what you do, then they like work it, they finalize it. Um, in terms of like video game stuff, like motion capture stuff, which unfortunately you can't really do right now, which is really sad. Mm. Um, they, there, they obviously take what you look like and then they adapt the character to your face and to your body and, um, you know, base it off of that. Um, I'm trying to think like, 
And then you do yeah. the voice, or you do the right, you do the voice after they do all the mocap stuff. Well, the video with the mocap stuff, you're doing the voice while you're doing it. Mm. So, so it's kind of like actually, it's nice because you're doing the acting physically as well as vocally at the same time. So it, it's matching. I mean, um, sometimes you have to do pick up sessions and and record stuff afterwards. Like for Anthem, I did. I I um, I recorded stuff after we did the mocap like a year year after that's a weird thing about vo like video uh, vo um voiceover stuff it's it takes so long like it actually i know movies take long but mm -hmm. you think movies took long but actually making a game or making like a an animation takes freaking forever so i don't know yeah yeah i bet i bet i've never i've never done any sort of animation just a you know tiny bit here and there that's it but nothing nothing crazy. did you guys see mike's animation uh, uh thing he yeah so did good. he just did he just post one? I saw one the two week ago one. I, I, that, that's I think hilarious I, one. Yeah, he has some new ones that I, he said he was working on an epic one. The last time I talked to him, he did episode two of this podcast. I love the Guillermo uh, del Toro one. That yeah, one was yeah. freaking amazing. I and was like, he, to clarify, this is Mike Mendez. Mike yes. Mendez, yeah, and the one he did for Sean's uh, uh, fiance Sarah Nicklin. Uh, a little happy happy birthday video was really hilarious. I too. didn't get to I see that, that. Oh, so, yeah, but, I, but I'm in it, I think, right? I, no, nobody yes. ever sent it to me. Oh, yeah. She posted <laughs> not that, it. Not that, that I, she it she posted not it. that I yeah. need it, but I wanted to see it. <laughs> he, 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 yeah, he posted. Oh, well, I think he Spooky posted the entire collected video to his YouTube. Yeah, and I know oh, that Mike really? could also. Okay. I know that Mike could also um, put together, or rather, uh, put out. His his individual film, I think, on his own YouTube account. Yeah, it's uh, like the the Annie well, song tomorrow. Yeah, it was amazing yeah. with vampires. With sure. vampires, he he would yeah. tell me about his uh, ambitions to you know just sort of as a personal side project to do that that major one that that takeover one the one that like ends with the battle between the aliens bot yeah. and uh, he told me like he was just thinking about doing that but he could never find the time and it's one of the direct results i've seen of somebody getting a chance to do something really cool with this time off and just going right for it and actually crossing it off their list it was really cool yeah uh yeah. so yeah so let's let's get into uh i am fear so you know sean and i uh we saw this back uh, when it premiered a few months i think it was a few months ago you guys had a, pr a premiere mm -hmm. screen it was yeah february 20th and then february, the world yeah. fell apart right the last there. time yeah. we yeah, saw back, you guys back when you used to have premieres yeah. yeah when we have yeah. premieres in restaurants and bars <laughs> and yeah and a social life and things oh to do. I remember it. But yeah, so that's, that's, I think. I'm yeah, so glad. I'm so glad that I partied that night and that we partied because that was <laughs> the last time I ever partied. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that night I actually I, got drunk. I, I actually <laughs> like danced. I actually like hung out with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> I celebrated. That was a fun night. So, Sean was the there. Party. Sean and Sarah were there. Yeah. Well, you, I was like, there too. Yeah. But you were not there yeah, at the after cool. party, were you, Christian? Yes, I oh, was. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Of course you were. See, See that's, that's how, how that's, that's how, how drunk I was. Yeah, yourself. I know. <laughs> yeah, you are. I now all, I remember. I, I, I didn't talk to you much because you were uh, with some of your close friends, like close friends you hadn't seen in a while or something. We're so sitting on like, that little bench. Yeah, I was hanging out with Sean. So, so with I am fear, Kevin. What this this. This thing took you probably 10 years of either, you know, dreaming with conceptualizing it in the early stages, many years. And then, uh, you know, it took a while for you to get it going. Like, tell us the, yeah. the, the journey for that story. Yes. Yeah, so so I made a, a short film uh, when my brother got back from Iraq uh, called uh, Isa Samir. And Isa Samir was uh, before then I had just been doing basically. Um, music videos uh i've been directing a lot of um hip-hop music videos and wow. uh For who? i made a uh i mean you got a minute <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah say some names uh, say some names uh the three six mafia um oh. i did uh music videos for jason derulo youngberg i worked with little john i worked with akon i worked with um and, and just go, yeah, I, I directed uh, Nipsey Hussle's biggest music video that that um, he's that rapper that yeah, just yeah. like the old, yeah, yeah. just like old yeah. school guy got shot. Um, yeah, it's that was the only the only route the only like death in music that actually really affected me because he was actually a really nice, nice guy. Um, 
And uh, so then basically uh, we made this short film and it did, it did really well, but it didn't lead to uh, what people, you know, always fantasize and dream of, which is, you know, it's going to go into Sundance and then I'm going to like, you know, go make the, the, the sequel to it or the, you know, the big version right away. And, yeah. and, you know, as, as it really probably shouldn't, uh, that didn't happen. Um, and so I, I sort of uh, just kept on that course of music videos until it got completely fried, as you do. And mm -hmm. um, I directed a television movie before then, uh, which uh, was on Lifetime and, and did, did really well. Um, Starring Christina? Uh, yeah, I cast Christina uh, in that as well. Is that um, how you guys met? No, no, I met Christina. Uh, oh, that's right. This is part of the story. I forgot. Kevin, Kevin, you, we can only see up to your chin. Right oh, now. is it? I wish somebody would have told me this. No, it's all right. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> the way that um, it will frame it. it... Uh, there you go. So um, I met Christina in 2009. And I think at the time uh, we had met talking about the 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 version of the film that eventually got made uh, actually and actually rob g is the one who kind of put us in touch um, right that's right because he said that he saw the short that kevin had directed and he thought it was really like he thought it was up my alley and i should watch it and so i watched it and then i, I don't know if i contacted kevin or if he introduced us but anyway um yeah he he introduced us and and we met and uh at, you know, at the time, it was like uh, I had really only started seriously putting together what the film would be. And uh, I thought Christina was, you know, great, but she, I thought at the time she was just like too young to play the, <laughs> to play the journalist. Okay. Um, and then fast forward, uh, after her dark past, um, I eventually, with Christina's help, because um, she was, was 10 to, back then, right? And, in 2009. I, yeah. With yeah. Christina's help, uh, was able to uh, get the right introduction and uh, funds fell into place for um, what became I Am Fear, which is originally called Sarah's Cell. And okay. uh, yeah, it, it, it's a, it was a very, very surreal sort of uh, journey that, you know, every, you know, every making every indie film is a surreal journey, right? But yeah. this one especially spanned like a decade and mm -hmm. reunited me with the person I originally actually uh, had met with. And it was very, very, very strange, but it, like all ultimately working with shout factory and making that film and having it do, um, you know, as, as it did reach, you know, theaters that, that was all sort of a surprise. Like, you know, you're used to getting kicked sort of in, in indie film world. Um, yeah. And when something actually falls into place and accomplishes like what you set out to, to do with it it's it's really nice it's really re rewarding yeah so the film itself is the film itself narratively is really unique um and there's a lot of a lot of themes that maybe uh would seem disparate but all kind of congeal right in the third act. um when you were going out and you know through that development process and through getting greenlit did you find any pushback in regards to any of those themes or there any, uh, you know, narrative yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's made. interesting you say that. Um, sort of, basically, by shout taking on the film, that had it had vetted basically the problems with that because I, the film, the script itself went everywhere and was sort of read by everyone, and there was attachments. Like I had all kinds of various different attachments at one point. At one point, Fomka Jansen was playing the lead, and Ron Perlman was playing another version. And what happens and always sort of went on was eventually people actually read the thing and their managers read it because, you know, their, their clients getting ready to do the movie, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's always what caused these big problems was is that, uh, you know, spoiler alert, she, the, she turns into a demon and eats everybody um, in the film. <laughs> and it's Wait, like Fomka didn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell? <laughs> in, in between so weird. Oh, fuck. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I, th this is like a makeshift uh, thing. Hey, you're putting makeup on. I like, think, I, I, I I'm not putting makeup on. I'm putting lip gloss on. But yeah, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> you, could, you took you took it off. Right, of, uh, right, it's right. Uh, Victoria's um, Secret uh, lip shine for uh, all you <laughs> yeah, men out I, there. I will buy that. 
anyway, uh, so, uh, so yeah, the, the, the film had always been structured like it, 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 it's part political. It's part, um, you know, uh, it's part war film. Although I think the horror aspect of it is really there through the, throughout the whole thing. Um, I think it's just really obviously towards the middle of the second act that it makes that jump into very obvious supernatural horror. And there was pushback uh, on it throughout the entire process, basically. But when it got to shout, there was no more talk of, hey, you know, uh, so I'll let you make this picture tomorrow, kid. But, uh, you know, my... Uh, my my niece is going to be in it, and uh, you know I want to cap it off at you know all these different things. And then by the way, they take out that demon bullshit at the end, you know. Yeah. And, well, I mean that's 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 an interesting aspect of the narrative is that um, you know, first off you have a female lead antagonist who right. by the third act turns into the female antagonist, and not right. only that, under um, some expensive you know prosthetic makeup, which you know we don't right. see generally that often. Um, in films, I mean, what what was that like for you, Christina? You know, jumping into that role because there was a lot of things that you certainly needed to bring to the screen um, in eliciting people's sympathy and empathy, and you know, and then you take this dramatic turn. What was that like for you? Um, I think well, so like when I was playing her as the journalist, I really felt like I was the journalist and I was the journalist who was kidnapped. But then I would like allow myself to one once in a while have these like moments where I was, I realized, Oh, but these people can't hurt me because, you know, but obviously not showing the audience that, but knowing right. to, in my, you know, for myself that that was the case. And then I think, um, I don't know. I've always had this, like, I've always wanted to be the monster in a movie. And I've, and it's funny because you say like women yep. don't get that opportunity and I still want to do it again because I feel like I haven't even gotten it out of my system yet. Like yep. how come, how come, you know, Freddie is a man and Jason's a man and Michael's a man and, you know, Leatherface is a man. And, you know, I mean, when we see a woman demon or, a, or a woman, um, you know, mo monster in a movie, it's more like she's a vampire or Sexual. she's, you know, we, we don't fatale. see, we don't see the ugly side. We don't see like the, just, just the monstrous side of it. Right. Yeah. And so um, I love doing it. And I, and I think it's like actually very empowering in maybe as an actor, maybe as a woman, it's empowering, but it's also, I think, empowering for film and for the story. I don't know. I just, I would like to, take it even further next time if it's ever possible again you know I, re I remember having that conversation with you about four or five years ago you were, you were just mentioning that there aren't any any uh, like horror icon villains that are yeah. female and, it, and, and you, it would be so I've been, always kept you in mind I'm trying to well, work on something you know you know like it's honestly what what made me realize this is going to the conventions right and doing the convention circuit and seeing the lines for all the men right for all like for Derek Mears, for Tyler Maine, for, um, you know, Kane and Hodder. Kane Hodder and all, and I'm like, and I had to actually do my research to figure out what, who they all played and the history of all the films, you know, when I was first starting conventions yeah. and I realized I'm like, wait, where are the, where are the women? Where are the lines for the women? I mean, we're, we're just like, you know, we have lines for being the victims in Halloween. Like, or you know, Elvira. I'm like, That's I'm like, it. I don't, yeah, exactly. I'm like, and so I just, um, I, I think that's what made me aware of it. But then I, after doing more research and watching the movies and being like, I just, I can't believe that it's so lacking. And so, I, I mean, I think it's great that Kevin wrote the script and that the protagonist is a female and she turns into a demon and she kills everyone practically. So yeah, spoiler alert. Yeah, so. spoiler alert. <laughs> and, 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 and I just like to, because he, he brought it up talking about the makeup um, and talking about, you know, uh, having to insinuating what a what a really rough process it was because it, it, it yeah. really really was sorry um, yeah we didn't even get into that yeah yeah Vinny Vinny uh Guastini who who you know did has done Jesus I can't even name his resume Saturday but, Night yeah. Live and a million movies yeah, <laughs> yeah he was on right. Saturday Night he's Live he's in Saturday yeah. Night Fever he's in the background dancing no, Sa no Saturday Night Live he was the effects <laughs> artist for a while right right that's yeah. right and he was also uh you know he he he's worked with Aronofsky he's worked with Michael Mann yep he's amazing and he we were always trying to get the, the the process in the chair down 
and he got it down to uh, two and a half hours. And Christina ended up doing some of her own wire work stunts in this full makeup yeah. and actually uh, nailing a lot of this different stuff that had to be thrown at her. And then after we wrapped, you know, you can, you, everybody knows how long an independent filmmaking day is. It goes on. It's not like, you know, a European set where it's like, oh, eight hours and then we have tea time. And then we, mm -hmm. you know, take that's a not, siesta. that's not a European set though either. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was in Ireland when I, when I, when I directed. Oh. Uh, in Germany, they make you work like 18 hours and they don't pay you overtime. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you have anything to do with Germany. No, yeah, maybe, that's not a, maybe. That's not in Germany. They're like, you would want this job. You work hard. You, <laughs> you don't complain. You're lucky to have this job. <laughs> Tells us why the friends are in Holland. That, that's my really um, bad, bad German accent. I, actually, I thought it was. That's my non-German accent. You have a good, German. Have a right good German accent. Uh, it's, just, it's, that, it's very strange to me that you have a, a poor German accent, given the fact that you're fluent in German. No, no, I yeah. do have a good. I do have a good one. I'll pull it out. Um, I put it out when I when I'm reading something. What do you What would you like me to say? The theater six. Ah, yes, the Chinese. Ah, oh, look, I have the advocate CCL Chinese theater tickets here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first time I actually saw you, well, besides Halloween, the first time I saw you in a movie was um, uh, uh, Adam Green's uh, the the Frankenstein uh, Killerama. Uh, yeah, yeah, Killerama. There, Killerama. there you go. Yeah, uh, what's his Diary what's his segment called? Yeah, Diary uh, Man Frankenstein. Yeah, it was awesome. It was fucking phenomenal. And I met you like a few that. weeks after that. I was like, oh, John, this is Christina. Oh, she's the one. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to meet her. So, yeah, that was like a that you were badass in that. I Hilarious. Joel, Joel is so amazing in that. Like, can you imagine he's oh, yeah. gibberish the entire time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I didn't know because I don't know that German. That's so great. That, that, that <laughs> so that's why people so in good. Germany love that short so much because um, because they know he's not speaking German and we are all speaking German. So he's speaking gibberish and we're talking back to him in German and it's like yeah. the most strange thing ever for anybody who who speaks Kalima. language. Kalima. <laughs> yeah. Kalima. Kalima. <laughs> so, yeah. Wait, what did I? Oh my gosh, that's I have to rewatch it. Yeah. Um, but I was going to say, yeah, that day of the stunts with the makeup and stuff, that was, um, that was intense. And actually I, I, um, I, what did I do? I bruised my, my tailbone, I think, yeah. because yeah. so we were doing this like wire work where I was jumping onto a van and every time I jumped onto the van, you go down in your knees, right. You, and you, you kind of drop. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that every time I was dropping, I was practically like bumping my tailbone against the right. bottom of the van. But because I was concentrated on so many other things, like I didn't, you know, realize yeah. it. And then for yeah. months afterwards, I was like, what is this horrible pain? <laughs> Did I break uh, my, my spot, you know, my oh, wow. tailbone, but it's just a tailbone bruise, but, um, it take forever and, to heal. Yeah, yeah. You, so you can't even yeah. get a cast for that. That's no, for sure. No, there's nothing you can do. It's just a bruise. You get a donut. But like it hurt. A, an inflatable that's donut. Do. You sit on that's that. Yeah. That's what they say you're yep. supposed to do. I was like, I'm not getting a donut. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, yeah, I mean that that the shoot was it 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 finished up literally. It couldn't have gone any other way. It was extremely brutal. It was extremely ambitious. Shooting, you know, anamorphic with a it was like a 15 day schedule. Um, and shooting complex, uh, shooting complex. I mean, there's like literally in that film, 600 VFX shots, which is, you know, people are like, where are they? And it's by, you know, as a filmmaker, you go good, you know, you, yeah, you, you, you can't see them. See them. Yeah. Um, but we made that movie for very little. I mean, very, yeah. Yeah. For 15 you guys days, saw it. You're gonna, so. It's going to be a low budget movie. Yeah. 15 days. Right. Shoot, and that's crazy. Like, no. so. When it came to all, so this is this entire film like really has this like super fucking gritty uh, terrorist uh, feel to it, where you, you just have p people just brutalizing each other in, in, and mentally and physically. Uh, right. Is this something? So you said your brother was uh, was in the army, or was in the military. I don't know which. Uh, where yeah, you my said whole it. family is actually. Oh, in really? The military, except, so is that except, something except you drew me. from? Did you draw yeah. from that to? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've always been. Um... I've just always been a very, like, I'm very fascinated by um, the armed services and fascinated by the psychology of people that participate in war. And I've seen, you know, 
uh, every side of it uh, when it comes to the ramifications of the people that come out of these things psychologically, how it affects them, PTSD, especially um, with my brother. And uh, that psychology was really, you know, when you're when you're like a young filmmaker starting out, you really, you know, that first script is really fucking terrible because you have yep. nothing to write about and you haven't seen shit in life. Um, and PTSD, seeing that was sort of the first thing that I really was able to get something under my fingernails as far as being able to draw creatively and write about a group of people. Um, and I think that it's being around, obviously, my brother that gave me that fascination. And, um, and you know, there's no other way really to depict terrorism than if you're going to, than brutally straight and exactly as it is. Um, I, I don't believe... I think you really get into a truly exploitive realm and territory when you start to do anything else but that. So that fine line is really, really going to have to be walked well um, when, yeah. you, when you do something like this, um, if that answers your, your question. Yeah, no, yeah, I get it. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you've, you've walked the. It, it is a fine line because you're really uh, presenting some uh, very strong uh, images and strong situations. It's like, wow, okay, all right. So he must really have done some research to, right, to get right. those situations uh, to to give them realism. Yeah, they, the really inner workings know. of a terrorist cell. Like Kevin is yeah. one of those people that actually watches those beheading tapes. Ah, I, just, yeah, just I, saying. I, I do too. I do too. Okay. I would never. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, when I, when I need to, I do it. But, uh, you so, never want to see him. You never. Not you, pleasant you tell people whatsoever. Not to watch him. Yeah. No, and I, I, I actually ever. did that. Uh, I did that for. It's not like I watched those and then was like, "Hey, what a great idea for a movie." Yeah. Uh, I, it's it's like I was making that movie and because of that, I watched them. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, it's kind of a research thing into the to the soul of humans. So it, it, and. There's probably about 0.5 percent of humans that could even watch this kind of stuff, but you 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 understand the frailty of the flesh. Yeah, and, that's, and, and that's, when you watch it, you don't ever 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 want to see it again. No, and no. and you would never tell and recommend anybody to ever see it, and it changes you forever. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Christina, what? Uh, how was it working on this uh, with this character and? Uh, and did you have people like Kevin to draw upon with your experiences, you know, maybe as a journalist in a war torn country, you know, like. So that's kind of that's that's what I watched the most of. And that's what I did the most research on is I actually listened to a lot of books on tape about um, about the the war, like in and uh, kind of like the CIA and how they kind of messed up and what like you know, kind of the background, like it was from a CIA perspective and how they. It was the his the history of the last like fifteen years and what happened in in Iraq and Af Afghanistan, um, and then I watched a lot of videos of people who had been kidnapped um, and were being held from different terrorist groups. You know, there are actually a lot of people who uh, get kidnapped in like the Philippines, um, and uh, the, there was a, this one woman or a couple actually who who got kidnapped in the Philippines and like they couldn't find them for like forever i don't know if, i don't know if it's was over a year or something and they kept on trying to get money but the government doesn't have you know they they say they don't pay anything so i don't know it was just so there was wasn't there a tv show it was a show or something right kevin that i was that you even suggested to watch it was it's about all these kidnappings in different countries and from different terrorist oh, groups is right. that on netflix I think so. Yeah, I, think so. Was, yeah, I saw that it show. Actually it actually was. It was. I don't yeah. think it is anymore. People, it was it. amazing. Yeah. It was. It was, it was so so frightening and so scary. And to because they used real footage of these people, whatever they could get, and yep. then you know stories and interviews with them afterwards. And that was to me the most fascinating. That really helped me so much in terms of understanding also how to play the character in terms of being kidnapped, right? Because yeah. my job as the actor has to be to at least convince you guys for a little bit that I am right. upset about being kidnapped. <laughs> like there was a, uh, uh, there was a, a grainy, like Zapruder esque um, proof of life scene that ended up getting cut. Um, but it, it shows exactly, you know, Oh my Sarah God! Where Brown is character. that? I forgot about that. Where yeah. is that? You have that? Uh, well, yeah. I have oh, we somewhere. did that. That was like a whole. Mo that was a. Cr 
Whoa, whoa right. you need to find that. That was good. Yeah. If there if there is ever if there's ever um uh, another version of the DVD or a Blu-ray that Child puts out, it would definitely be on that. Um, but that was literally ripped from the pages of life. Um, and so I think that putting that effort into capturing and representing all aspects of it, the journalists, you know, the terrorists, you know, because even there's there's humanity and and elements of the terrorists and the terrorists that, you know, you're not going to see. It's like everybody's pissed off, you know, uh, you know, Middle Eastern people are somewhat pissed off of a depiction of just basically them as terrorists, period. Well, it's kind of like, well, you know, this is a film about Middle Eastern terrorists and they exist and they're pissed off that, uh, you know, uh, honestly, Journalists are, are, are portrayed uh, as both left wing and right wing. You know, it, it, this film is like inflammatory in a certain sense. But she and I really did put a tremendous amount of effort into trying to depict reality in a non exploitive truly well, honest way. So for like a while, we were wondering, and I do, I mean, now talking about this, it's going back. And I remember is we were not sure if we should make Sarah Brown like a left journalist or right like should she be conservative or liberal and we went back and forth because at the time like trump started going after the press and we yeah. this was not something that he had written this before trump started saying that yeah. the press was evil and that they were taking you know telling fake stories like so so then i was like well she has to be conservative because if we make her liberal then it's like really yeah. what what but this was an actual conversation that was had and definitely, we went, and, definitely. And, and and I'm so glad that I pushed for her to be conservative because there's no other way I could see right now. And then I had somebody say, Well, I'm not sure what like the politics of the movie is. And I'm like, I mean, it's obviously we're not like siding with the conservative uh journalist she's a demon <laughs> like these she, are people that don't understand metaphor or you know i mean like, like you know it's not a, a you know it's it's like, not it's i mean i know are, and obviously wow, there are people those people are beautiful but i've actually <laughs> had somebody write morons, that to me actually <laughs> so anyway uh, but, um, i have no problem saying that either um yeah but i, I mean so, anyway there, that was a conversation and a very big conversation we had and i'm glad we yeah. made that decision yeah definitely and and you were the you were the one that pushed for uh, it to be more glaring that she that was, she was at, mm. because because I I had I had originally uh, you know said it and made her like a you know uh, Fox neoconservative originally she was kind of a teabagger and that wasn't really you know relevant anymore and and in order to clarify the fact that she um, wasn't a anti uh, you know. Um, that the film wasn't anti-liberal um, in, in its sentiments, it, it really needed to be hammered home that she was uh, very, very conservative. And that, that's why there's that um, scene with the exposition in German where you really, that's kind of the only true window you have into um, her internal psychology and mm -hmm. what is in play. But that many, many people wanted to cut that and that was something that I felt really. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad it. because because no, I, I I mean people afterwards said that that was the part of the movie that connected them with the character, right. you know. Yeah, and I, I I myself said that to you after the. Uh, okay, after yeah. The yeah, that was like literally my favorite part of the film. So yeah, I'm very very happy that it remained in. That was something that was a big argument. I mean, people did try to get it cut out of the f film. <laughs> so. Right. It, it, it came. It came. I, it came down to a. Uh, uh, a fucker walk basically moment with um a couple different people uh that tried to get that cut and um after we had already shot it yeah right? yeah they let you do everything uh you know get it in the can and then blindside yeah. you later that they uh, they don't want it whereas this is a battle up front that you have with people sometimes and you say you know uh we won't do this if this is going to leave you know if this is going to go away later on in the process and i think you have to you have to really with even all your allies um, uh, in the independent filmmaking process, clarify and spell out as much as you possibly can up front because um, it, it, proverbially it is like a war, it's not, nothing like a real one, but it, mm -hmm. it, it, it is an extremely hard process where um, 
egos become inflated. The personality and, war. Yeah. 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 And, and, and you're dealing with people who, you know, they seem just like your greatest possible asset in peacetime. And then get them in wartime and they go to bloom. You know, they, they become completely different people. And you find out if you're not smart and how you don't have experience that really that person was going to be completely useless throughout, <laughs> you know, the journey. Um, yeah. But we, I'm sure we could all probably talk for hours on on indie filmmaking personalities, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, why don't we uh, why don't we tell everyone uh, where you can find this film and and if is it is it out on Blu-ray or is it not? It's it, it is out it, on Blu-ray. It, it is and, out on Blu-ray. And okay. Thanks mm -hmm. thanks to uh, some of the confusion over whether or not it's conservative or liberal, it can be found literally everywhere. Um, it, <laughs> all of VOD. <laughs> it is yeah. it, it is the um, I, I think it's the first um, Shout Factory film to make it into every single. Um, installation uh, of red box in every single site so 42,000 really? different kiosks oh, it's in best buy it's walmart in walmart it's in, it made the shelves in walmart um Excellent. which is Excellent. you know if you know anything about that marketplace it's becoming increasingly Rare. small for optical yeah. media um yeah. and it's at target and barnes and noble and uh, <laughs> and amazon being like the main um vod uh, yes. but it, 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 it's going to have licenses that revert to other places, uh, it by the end of this year as well. Great. So yeah, on online where you, where, where can you find it? I don't even know on it, iTunes. Amazon. Yeah. The best, Amazon? yeah. The I, I, iTunes is, is, uh, obviously a, a main choice, but Amazon I think is probably, um, the most streamlined and easiest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Yeah, so everyone check out I Am Fear. I want to thank uh, Christina and Kevin and Sean Decker for being on the Yay. show. Uh, I Yay. can't wait to see you guys soon. Uh, hopefully we can party together. Christina, you got to oh come back God. to L.A. soon. Let's make uh, a movie, please. Oh, can we oh, get on yeah. a set again? Let's just make a movie. <laughs> Look at me, I'm party. praying. <laughs> I'm praying. <laughs> we both have crucifixes over our shoulders, strangely, as well. I'm Ooh, gonna... Actually, I noticed that Sean has one, too. I was like, wow, we are the most, whoa. like, we are the most protected oh, group of people. I, I know, you know and I'm world. Jewish too. Not me. I don't keep. I don't keep those <laughs> trinkets of deceit around my apartment. <laughs> well, as a Jew, actually, I have, I have mine, a few. <laughs> I have a few. <laughs> um, all right, it's just nice to see right. my friends. Yeah, Thanks, and guys. and don't forget June first. So watch American Dad. <laughs> yes, June first, American Absolutely. Dad. Absolutely. And, oh, and, and actually, over... Sinister Sinister Seduction is all over playing, too. I saw it in the Los Angeles Times. They were promoting it. That was my last Lifetime movie. They were like, and then really? people are loving that movie. I don't know why. Like, uh... They're like, oh, the mother, the poor mother. She's played by, you know, and she falls for this bad guy. I'm like, oh, this is bad great. Bad child. Uh, <laughs> everyone, make sure to go over to HalloweenMovies.com and check out Sean. Sean is in control of the all of the, the, of the output over there. And uh, they, I'm sure they have a lot of great stuff coming up with the new movies coming out uh, over the next few years. So please uh, make sure to Some, join. Something, up with, something coming up with Christina shortly as well. So. Yeah. Ooh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Well, uh, all right. Uh, thank you, guys. And I'll uh, talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks so much, Christian. All right. Be safe. Oh. Thank you all for listening to My Favorite Horror Movie. Please subscribe to us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, and catch our videos on YouTube. All of those links and ways to pick up our books are at MyFavoriteHorrorMovie.com. My Favorite Horror Movie is a Black Vortex Cinema production. Thank you all, and we'll see you soon, evil ones.